there's that eternal question of like does anyone ever voluntarily cede power or or are they pushed yeah Welcome back to part two of this episode of Impolite Company. We're jumping straight back into our conversation about layoffs in tech and the impact it may be having on DEI. Enjoy. Is it? it th- there's no necessary, there's no real risk. Lose your job, get another job. What would you do? Take some time out. If you had no risk. <laughs> like, what would you do? Like, I, what would I do if I, I had no, con- there was no consequences to my actions? Well, if it, it in so far as it related to me, you know, as a as a woman who has been in fairly senior positions in tech companies for a long time now, mm. when I think back to some of the discomfort I experienced and some of the behaviors I had to kind of or I felt like I had to swallow and mm. take home or challenges I didn't feel like I could I could make yeah that would all change yeah so in so far as it relates to me I'd walk out yeah or I'd say this is this is bullshit yeah or I'd say that was sexist I'm not having yeah. it just, yeah so the, the, <laughs> just shoot from the, the hip the sh- <laughs> yeah the- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean that's almost not even shooting from the hip right the way that I've seen certain people shoot from the yeah. hip is a whole different thing but um it it's what does that give you? Well, suddenly the dynamic is confidence mm. and valuing yourself. Yeah. And and th- often the, the the structural dynamics within, this doesn't just apply to tech, but you know, within these tech companies is you have a group of people who are able to behave in that way and are used to behaving in that way and thinking in that way at the very top. Mm. And the more they behave that way, the more they're seen as mavericks and yeah. geniuses. And wow, that guy shoots from the hip and just says what he thinks. Yeah. And like, he's is so 100% confident yeah. on everything that he says. Even yeah. when he changes his mind, he was 100% confident on that thing this yeah. week. And I was 100%. But, we don't, but don't talk about that. <laughs> shh, 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 don't talk about it, that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, then, and then you have people typically lower down the organization who this is their livelihood they have mouths to feed they have mm. um they don't have the same luxuries they yeah. all you know then they're not paid the same they're from a different socioeconomic background they're yeah. from a different um ethnic background then they're, they're yeah. existing in spaces that are predominantly white predominantly yeah. straight whatever yeah. at work there's this big disconnect then and so there's, there's almost an existential question here in so far as, as as these layoffs are concerned for me, which is how do we, how can DEI exist in a meaningful way in companies that operate in a purely capitalist yeah. way? Yeah. Where, where do those things, can they coexist? Yeah, I think, I think it's a really good question. And from my experience, as soon as, as much as somebody says that they are an ally, as much as someone says that they care mm. about these types of things, as soon as the business is maybe not performing, having to make some difficult decisions, they literally go mute. Mm-hmm. You won't hear about the things that they may have been talking about very openly. It just suddenly becomes a, the way that, that these things are prioritized often gets put right down to the bottom because it's not seen as, and, and you, you you see the real prioritization happening rather yeah. than when everything's going great and there's lots of kind of money flowing around and you can invest in like a pet project. I know that's that's mm. not what it is. But like, DEI is us, often seen as a pet project. It's a pet project. project. It's like something that's, that's um, that is, that you can, exp- you know, that is, um, I can't remember the word. I can't remember how to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that you can do without. Yes. It's something that you can pick it up. We'll pick it up. It's almost like after. an extracurricular. Yeah, extracurricular. It's like, yeah, we can. It's like, like the yoga in the pool table. Yeah. It's a it's a kind of. But a lot perk. of the time, yoga and pool tables don't get cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a whole yeah, yeah. But it, it's seen as in that in that um, 
space, almost yeah. like a kind of well-being add-on. Yeah, we do DEI. Course, so it's a well-being it? add-on. <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, you and I have spoken at length yeah. before about what does it mean to care deeply about yeah. DEI. You yeah. know, I've had so many experiences speaking to senior leaders where mm. they've said, "I care deeply about DEI," yeah. and that's always f followed by "but." Mm that's too expensive can't do that we don't have the budget we're not going to invest in oh, i just don't XYZ. like black people and no, i'm joking it's not <laughs> fuck off <I> don't. Yeah. <laughs> and but and and by the way you're a you're a brown person having to have that conversation of yeah. why it matters why it's important um what's the energy that that takes right and the uh, the the energy that that takes <clears throat> get a good therapist mm. prefer preferably a black woman is my mm. advice on that front <laughs> um but yeah i think that that the wider question for me with all of this boils down to a question of ethics in a way yeah are our ethics really our ethics are our values really our values if they if we abandon them when things are tough yeah arguably that's not you know that if you take this context away if i said to you kieran these are my deeply held beliefs yeah. in life you know i care about social justice i care about the planet you know these are things that i care about but i'm actually not gonna i'm only gonna do stuff about that if the going is good and if it's if there's no personal risk to me mm. yeah <laughs> well you know that's not that's not really how this works yeah you know so um and i, w I would sorry to interrupt yeah, I, I would question whether they were a core value right like a core value is something that you cannot function without investing in or without deeply if you deeply care about something yes can you function can you compromise should you compromise and I would question whether that was a value. And that's sometimes what I do, right? When someone says that, says that they deeply care about something or that it's a value for them and I see them, their actions and their behaviors show the complete opposite. I'm like, mm. that's, it's an, that's an aspiration. Yes. <laughs> that's not a core value. That's an yeah. aspiration. That's okay. Just admit it's an aspiration. Yeah. And then we can have a discussion about it. And this is where actually a lot of, even even layoffs aside this is where you know speaking to other pe professionals in the dei space specifically this is almost like the eternal battle yeah. of dei is is working with companies who say they care about it mm. and they're not lying no. they're not being disingenuous or dishonest necessarily but the question is not do you care about it as a nice to have? The question yeah. is, how deeply do you care about it? Because it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. Yeah. It's not going to be overnight. It's going to be complex. And if it's, if it's, I care about it as long as I can do it quickly and fill these roles yesterday yeah. and find, you know, as many black people as I can find white people for this, yeah. you know, senior product manager mm. role using all of the same sources and all of the same techniques that yeah. I've been using for the past 15 years yeah. to get all of these white people. I want to do it differently, but I don't want to change anything. But I don't want to change anything. <laughs> you know, that's where the rubber hits the road on how much do you care about it? How yeah. much do you want to do it? Yeah. Does this, how far are you willing to go? Mm. You know, there's this, you know, a, a perfect um, epitome of this, I think in the news at the moment is the, the Qatar World Cup and the the row over the England team wearing their the LGBT it's not even really an explicit LGBT um solidarity statement yeah. but wearing the armband the rainbow armband and you know the backdrop is there was a question about the ethics of having the World Cup in Qatar, in Qatar. there is still an ongoing question yeah. about that yeah. for various <laughs> reasons not least of which is that um, country's treatment of of LGBTQ plus people, and one of the arguments for going to the World Cup and the England team going and the commentators going and all of this was we're going to go, but we're going to show 
a statement of solidarity with LGBTQ plus people. Yeah. We're going to wear the armband, which is a fairly meek show of solidarity, yeah. but it's a sh it's a mm. public statement it's nonetheless. It's something. Yeah. And within minutes, really, <laughs> yeah. as soon as as soon as the team were told, you'll get you'll get some kind of sanction, yellow card, I think is the sanction for wearing that. They decided not to. Mm. So, so it's just a perfect example of we care about this thing, but so weakly yeah. that that it crumbles under the yeah. slightest amount of pressure. Yeah, yeah. And I, that's almost like an allegory for DEI initiatives yeah. Yeah. in tech. <laughs> yeah, that is so. That is such a good example as well. It's the and 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 it's almost like the the more you say you care about it, <laughs> the higher you higher you fall from and the harder you fall mm -hmm. like the harder you land sorry is because you've made such a big deal of saying you care and doing a bunch of virtue signaling potentially maybe not even aware of it mm. and then when you have a scenario where you can really demonstrate that you care and you can potentially use your privilege to show that and do the right thing because of your own risk management like <laughs> system that you work against or work or work to you end up doing the complete opposite and i and i don't think it's conscious it's more of a self preservation type thing and you see it happening within like underrepresented parts of the workforce as well it's like mm -hmm. sometimes you're put in these like really weird situations and I've seen people go into self-preservation mode as a response to that. Mm -hmm. And that's really sad. Because then you they, we're then talking about people that are 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 potentially um their actions are having an impact on themselves, essentially. Mm. <laughs> on what could happen to them in the future. And that's I think that's a, a lot of that is around assimilation and doing what is seen as the right thing or what is gonna be yeah. rewarded. So Self-preservation is intoxicating. Yeah. And it's about proximity to power in the end. Yeah. And it, it, it stems from what, or my view is it stems from a kind of zero sum game kind of yeah. mindset of, okay, I've realized there's only so many slices of pie here. Yeah. So I'm going to just take the biggest slice of pie I can take. Yeah. If that means smaller pie for other people, like, so be yeah. it. This is my pie. Yeah. Um, and a bunch of those players are gay. Yes. That will be taking those armbands off. Yes. You know, I don't think there's any question. I don't think anyone questions that there's no, there's there's not more um, uh, LGBTQ plus no, football players. No, football is a vacuum in which there are no gay people yeah. at all ever. <laughs> it's just, it's just, yeah, yeah. Like, there's so much at stake, right? When you start putting, when you're, when you're paying people half a million pounds a week. Yeah you put another layer of of pressure and risk that they have to then navigate. Yeah. And I think that's that is the same even when you, like that is also the same when you may by all intentions want to be an ally but sometimes there's not that awareness of the risk that you may have to take until it is presented. Well, allyship is not allyship if you're not taking any personal risk in a way. Or, or, or if you're not willing to take personal risk. Yeah. It doesn't have to be dangerous 100% of the time. Yeah. But if if there's no personal risk involved, then it then it's really not allyship. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about the armband thing and talking to a friend about it yesterday. And we were saying, considering the sanctions a yellow card, if you're Harry Kane who's a striker, yeah. doesn't get carded very much anyway, yeah. is is married to a woman with kids, so is a straight ally, mm. has the opportunity to be a straight ally. Mm. There's not a huge amount of personal risk. He's not a gay player as far as I'm mm. aware. And him getting a yellow card doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Yeah. You know, you'd have to be careful for that game to make sure you didn't get a second yellow. Yeah. But how powerful would it be if he came onto the pitch with the armband on and the referee gave him a yellow? Yeah. The pictures of that around the world, yeah. of him being yellow carded yeah. for that show of solidarity, yeah. would be enormous. Yeah. 
and it's very little personal risk. Mm. So, you know, I think that there is this question of what does our allyship mean? And, and, and black people in particular were cautious, rightfully so, Mm-hmm. in 2020 and beyond yeah. around a lot of these statements w- that were being made. Yeah. I, you know, I spoke to a, when I, I quit my last uh, role and was speaking to various people and kind of networking, mm-hmm. um, having quit, I spoke to somebody, very senior woman in Apple, mm. black woman who told me, don't necessarily specialize in DEI. Wow. And her reasoning was, we don't know where that's going to go, necessarily. And and I don't think that was nece- I don't think that was impractical advice necessarily. Yeah. I did not take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did the complete opposite. Complete opposite of what this yeah. very smart woman told me to do. <laughs> um, but it's interesting, right? Of of this caution of is DEI going to be around mm. I obviously believe it will yeah but I believe it will because people like us will push for it to yeah. be I don't believe it will because it's a just an inherent truth that yeah. we've made so much progress that yeah. this is here to stay yeah um and I think about, yeah, I'm interested in your view. I think about some of the things that sometimes get described as a trend and it makes me angry because yeah. it's like, this is our lives, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so the, the another example of this is, um, I don't know if you saw recently, there was this um, article, I think it was in the New York Post about heroin chic. No. So heroin chic, what does that mean? For anyone who doesn't know, <laughs> was a real healthy trend back in the noughties of, uh, it was like skinny is in. Oh, is this the kind of skinny like Skinny women, models, s- cigarette, Diet Moss, Coke. Exactly This that. kind of time. Oh yeah, Emaciated I do know about Emaciated yeah. is a trend. Yeah, yeah. And there was this article, I think a month or two ago in the New York Post, it was like heroin chic is back. And it was like all of these images on the front, it was like Khloe Kardashian with all of her bum implants taken out. And, (laughs) you know, um, and all of the, I follow quite a lot of um, plus size influencers and things like that on, on Instagram. And they were rightly saying, you know, women's bodies are not a trend. You can't just kind of say, oh, sorry, fat was in five minutes ago. It's not anymore. Go back. (laughs) Just, just go. Yeah. Yeah. Change again. (laughs) You know, it's like, this is, this is our lives. Yeah. This is who we are. This is this is what the body we exist yeah. in. Yeah. We can't change that. And so when people say, oh, DEI, that's a bit of a flash in the pan. Yeah. Um, it makes me so angry, not because I'm in DEI, mm. because that's a route I've chosen to, to mm. take, but because it feels like, to your point about the disconnect, it yeah. feels like this kind of game that's being played. Yeah with our lives. Oh, you know, we want to put you in the forefront cuz you're what's in right now. Yeah. And then that's not really in anymore, so we're just yeah. going to just going to quietly retire that. Yeah. Initiative. It's like sh- again, I've, sh- I think I've done this many times. <laughs> sh- yes. Your voice mattered before, but now just be quiet. Yeah, shut up again. Yeah. No more <laughs> of that talky talky stuff. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I think and that's what makes me angry as well. It's it's because it starts playing with your head, right? Because at one in at one point, you are people are listening, right? Will mm-hmm. seem to be listening and understanding, mm-hmm. and then there'll be other. In, so in one scenario, people are doing that, and then in other scenarios, it's almost like, am I speaking a different language? Like I'm speaking with the same person, mm-hmm. and their response to it is completely different. That's quite hard to like process, and yeah. it's not something that other I think other people have to negotiate about their lives and who they are, and what they represent. Like I'm. No. You're che- you're moving the goalposts around the equity that I have, and in and whilst you're doing that, you're yeah. also telling me to bring my whole self to work. Yeah. So you're telling me to talk to you about how I'm gay, and you're yeah. telling me to talk to you about my trauma. Yeah. And to bring. Yeah. I'm not really doing that at work anyway, and I think most mm. most brown people are cautious enough yeah. to say, 
I'll bring you a I'll bring you a bit of my authentic yeah. self. I'm not going to bring. But you don't deserve it. All. My whole self. But you don't deserve it. All. We didn't even share that. I think with each other until for me anyway. No. I think it was. Mu I felt much more comfortable with all the things that did happen, and that was more about. I don't think that will change. I yeah. think that that will always be a thing that is now. Oh, the cat's out of the out of the bag, right? Yes. Or is it the cat out of the hat? I can't remember. The bag. Out of the bag. Yeah, it's the bag. Like the cat's <laughs> cat, cat out of the hat. Like it, it's now out of the bag, right? So it's like we're now all speaking. I like openly about this, which I think is a really important thing, and I'm so happy that we are able to do that. The reason why we're able to have this conversation would this have happened before? That's true. Then. Or would we just be like, we just need to get on. We all know what's going on. We're all kind of like, we'll be in these situations together. Unspoken truths that we have. Um, That's true. Perhaps one of the really positive outcomes of the kind of 2020 yeah. wave of DEI um, is, and by the way, I'm in DEI. So obviously I hugely believe in DEI programs mm. and initiatives. Um, but as we've talked about, yeah. there's DEI initiatives rooted in in really meaningful work and there's DEI yeah. initiatives that are kind of tokenistic and yeah. and PR based. Yeah. Um, but but regardless, I think one of the things to your point that has emerged, which I hadn't thought about until this moment, mm. is even if people of colour, queer people disabled people with disabilities mm. you know people who exi have have marginalized identities even if their wider organization yeah is not treating them with the humanity that they deserve there have been communities that have built up that will remain yeah regardless and can't be dismantled i don't think if yeah. we remain having these open conversations and valuing ourselves and that's not saying we weren't valuing ourselves before but valuing ourselves in a group if that makes sense and in relation to community <laughs> yeah. there is power in community yeah and actually a lot of most positive action <laughs> yeah. in the world actually comes from communities pushing yeah the powers that be you know there's that yeah. there's that eternal question of like does anyone ever voluntarily cede power or or are they pushed? Yeah. Um, and so actually, if that momentum remains, regardless of what decisions executives are making, mm. does that forward movement keep happening? Yeah. And there's a, there's a, I'm, I'm guessing we probably need to tie up soon. <laughs> yes. But I think there's a, there's a, um, an analogy that um, I hope I don't say her name wrong. Uh, Buzma St. John. I hope I've, who's the um, CMO of Netflix. Um, I, I think she's left Netflix now. Oh, she left now. Oh, okay. I think she's ex C CMO oh, of Netflix. Okay. So but, but like rock star CMO amazing. of like, many huge companies. Yeah. Like for me, somebody that I've only discovered like quite recently, I don't know how or why, but only discovered quite recently and have invested a lot of time in listening to lots of interviews. That woman's consistency is incredible. Also, her candor and her ability to speak the truth and land messages. I mean, it's why she's in marketing. Uh, like, she, and she has openly said, "I'm the best marketer in the world." In the world, <laughs> yeah, which I love. Did you see? Did you, and so the, the the quote and the analogy that she used was like, "I'm like the sun," and she's like, "I'm going to compare myself to the sun." Yeah, and what I am, I'm like the sun. It's like. Everybody loves the sun, right? When it's like you're out and getting a tan, like people love to get a tan and this is great. I've got an idea. I'm going to pull that sun into my house. <laughs> and she said sometimes what happens is people don't think about what bringing a superstar like her, who's very good at what she does, operates at a very high level in many aspects, what that means and what mm -hmm. environment how the environment will need to change to pursue, not to really support that person, but the impact that person will have in that environment. If you bring the sun into your house, you're going to be incinerated. You're going to be blind. <laughs> and you're going to be blind. And that's not to say that it's a, it, and, and that analogy isn't to say that she, she would be a negative impact, but you need to have, you need to be ready for what you're bringing in. You're, you're, you're bringing in someone that's operating at a level and can bring a completely different 
level of of success to your business but that's going to come with some change and that person is going to tell you what that change is and your environment needs to be ready and the environment needs to be ready and i, I just thought it was such a good analogy like mm. it's a funny one as well but it's such a good analogy and i sometimes feel like the things that you're praised for before you come in are sometimes the things that people find the most difficult most and i think jarring when yeah, you come in the most jarring it's such a good word so it's like i know that i'm a very outspoken person and i have really worked on myself to be that person. I feel like I balance it. I, I understand how to build relationships, the importance of building relationships and the benefits of those in terms of like what I gain from those things and how you create that community. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I do think sometimes it's, I sometimes feel like a frustration. Like, like, oh God, you know. You can feel that you're frustrating people. You can people. feel it because I'm challenging people. I'm challenging. And, I, and, and, I, and I, the reason why that analogy kind of really resonated with me is because I think it's very hard to be, if you're in an environment where you're always feeling like that, Yeah. that is taking a lot of energy and people want you to be that. You're there to do it. People are paying you to do that. But I don't think they're maybe having the, they don't really understand the impact it might be having on you being that person and having to deal with what comes with that um so yeah so i think that there's, there's that side of things as well and we're talking about those communities it's like that's having a support system is really important when you are i think a lot of people that put into senior roles that are from underrepresented you go one of two ways <laughs> completely mm -hmm. assimilate or become quiet or you become this disruptor Yes, and also, and we don't have time to talk about this yeah. now, but maybe this is a future conversation. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's this concept of the glass cliff, yeah. right? Where people from underrepresented backgrounds get put in situations where they're, where people know they're gonna fail, mm. where they where it's chaos or it's a mess that they have to clean up and they don't have the support from the executive yeah. team or the people around them or yeah. whatever. They're expected to be a superhero. Literally. And when they don't, yeah, not only does that set they, have they been set up to fail mm. but it it feeds the narrative that yeah. well we tried that thing yeah. we tried we tried diversity equity and inclusion yeah. we put a black woman in the yeah. c-suite role and it didn't work out yeah. so that's a good enough excuse yeah. not to try that that's again. that's why we should never ever do it again that's why we should you know, never do it we again th we threw um a gay black woman at the problem she wasn't able to do it, so you're all wrong, and we're never going to do it again. <laughs> and you're all bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you're so we're never going to put anybody. The amount of white yeah. men you see fail, and it's yeah. never associated it's with, upwards, their, right? with their whiteness or their maleness. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. But but it's a, you know when when a cisgendered white straight man, mm. middle aged man, fails yeah. in an executive position, no one goes. Well, we're never going to hire that kind of person again, demographically yeah. speaking. They go, no, in that case, it was the individual. Yeah. But when it's a woman, yeah. when it's a person from a historically marginalized background, their identity is tied up with the failure. Oh, gosh, it's true. It, and, and, and that's, and obviously that's not always the case, but it's, even if it's not, um, if it's unconscious that that's happening, mm -hmm. you see the signs. And I think when you are a person of color or somebody from an underrepresented group, sometimes it's a feeling and you pick up in the way people are speaking about certain things and there mm -hmm. are patterns, maybe not when you're zoomed right in, but you like, oh yeah, I've had that happen to me before and that's where I ended up like three times. Mm -hmm. So that little comment or that little uh, opinion or of that certain scenario, you're like, I kind of know where that ends up. I know what that's rooted in. I'm not gonna make loads of assumptions, yeah. but it, how do you, that's something that you then have to like process and. You have to process those those microaggressions, yeah. which almost like leads us back to the original thing that we were talking about, which yeah. is the need to be perfectionists <laughs> because we feel the need to, we're used to having to represent our whole race, our yeah. whole gender, our yeah. whole- <laughs> in, a mon in a very monolithic way. In a very monolithic way in every situation and be better than everyone, yeah. uh, lest anyone go, we're not going to have a brown person in that room again. Yeah, you never want that situation. She was shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 and that's what happens. Yeah. Um, that brings us really nicely to the end of this conversation. <laughs> thank you for listening if you've made it through the whole podcast. Yes, um, thank you so if much. If there's things that you want to challenge us on, if there's things that you want us to talk about, or if you want to come and speak to us about stuff, reach out. There's no contact details yet because this is all really very, very, very new. Like and subscribe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Hi. Bye. Bye. <laughs>